All right, cool, bro. So what I'd say, uh, just give a little brief introduction on obviously who you are, where you come yeah. from, and, and then we'll get this started, man. So obviously, I'm Jaden Brown um, from South London, Lewisham, and I play for Huddersfield Town. Yeah, cool. All right, bro. So let's take it back to the beginning for you. So uh, in terms of your football, yeah. where did it kind of start? Uh, what age maybe and what club? Um, I started quite young, you know, like, I say about six, seven. But yeah. you know, like at those ages, there's not really many teams back then. So I joined for Coverley Rangers for a bit, and then I joined that Moonshot. I think under nines, under tens. Yeah, yeah, roughly, I'd say. We got Moonshot still. We got Moonshot. Yeah, yeah man. I was, at, I was at Moonshot for three, four games, and then I got signed for Tottenham. Yeah, no, definitely. So, in terms of that, so that feeling of being scouted for Tottenham and then did you have a, a full six-week trial or how, how did that process go for you? Um, you know what? The trial was good, you know? Yeah. I, I started there as a striker, but the level was crazy, I'll be real. Yeah. The level yeah. from Sunday League to going to Tottenham, like some of the best young players in England, it was crazy. I feel like I didn't do too well, but I got signed, obviously, and yeah, we moved from there. Yeah, yeah. So, in terms of like you said, you didn't, you didn't particularly thought, or you didn't think you did too well. But how did you feel when you got the papers and they said, "Yeah, we're gonna sign you"? Like, you must have been buzzing and just, just happy to get or ready to get to work. You no, know, I was buzzing because I remember at the start of my trial, I needed some new tools, you know. <laughs> but you know back then it was tough like getting new boots and that it was a myth like so I remember my mum saying like if you get signed you could get two pairs of boots you want okay and I remember back then I think the mercurial vapours were, were popping back then yeah, yeah. I didn't have them I didn't have them <laughs> so I wanted a pair of mercurial vapours and then I remember the like even before they gave me the papers like, I said to my mum that's the first thing I said to my mum like if I get inside for Tottenham, I want them boots. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember getting them the same day. But that day, it felt good to me. I went back to school, told yeah. them my boys, my teacher. I was quite happy, to be fair. No, sweet. So, cool. In terms of that now, you're signed at Tottenham. And I think you stayed there until what age again? Was it about 18? Yeah, just before my 19th birthday, so 18, yeah. Yeah, so... In terms of that, you're, you've been at Tottenham for a good nine years. Talk us through that that time you had at the club and maybe just tell us a bit about the club. Like, Did you enjoy your time there? And You know what? It was lit, man. I enjoyed like, every moment of it, to be honest. From going to different tours, you know, playing at stadiums. Every moment of it. Like, yeah. Youth Champions League, FA Youth Cup. I enjoyed it. It was tough. And then there was times where like the later stages where I won't play in like twenty threes. Yeah. Um, I'll get into that a bit later, but that. Yeah, talk, maybe talk a little bit more about how it felt when you first that first stage of under nines or tens up until maybe about fourteens, fifteens. Um, how, how was that process of, of you know what? That's when that's when football was at its best because it was like no seriousness, it was just fun. Yeah. So you go to school, kickball go chain and come back home like there was no pressure you're just enjoying yourself and that's that was probably the best few years of football where you could just kick ball there's no pressure and just improve really yeah so for me as well i i want to bring this up because i think it's kind of important um obviously i know that you're a left back now yeah. and obviously like you said when you went into uh, spurs you was more of a striker slash left winger so how did you find that transition period of them making you trans uh, Go into a left back. You know what? Like, as I said before, that like, it was just kick and ball for the fun of it. So back then, I was easy. I was. I didn't mind really. Like they told me they wanted to see me at left back, and then I remember we played. I never forget the game because I, I job played hard. I think we played Swindon, and then I was at to like my mom after the game. Like, you know what? I kind of like. I like this position. Like if they want to move me, they didn't say anything about moving me, but. I don't mind because I enjoy it. Yeah. No, that's the thing. Um, yeah, so we're at Tottenham where we're getting to the age of uh, the scholars, the under-16 under, under 16 age. 
yeah. how, how did you feel when you got that that deal and they said yeah we're we're going to we're going to give you a scholarship um i was just mad excited bro like mad excited from just knowing you're going full time really yeah i was just so excited for that and i remember again i was just buzzing because i remember i was one of the first to get my scholarship like get offered and i was just buzzing i just wanted more really like, yeah after that i started playing a few under 18 games at 16 and i felt i felt on top of the world that like, you know when you just feel like yeah i could play like, that yeah, no. yeah definitely that's big uh so okay. yeah 18 starts, uh, you're, you're in the 18, you're playing, like you said, FA Youth Cups now, now on the table, the Youth Champions League. H- how did you find those experiences and how do you think they helped you grow as a player? Um, crazy experiences because it's like, it's like playing in the Champions League, you know what I'm saying? It's not, but it's the same format and it's a well-organised tournament. So it was just mad, like getting on a private jet for the first time. Travelling with the first team, you know, like, you got a game, it's on TV, the first team watch it, you go to the stadium after it's watch their game, it's, it's, it's crazy, yeah. even, like, playing teams like Barcelona, and that was just mad, it's, it's mad, and I thought, like, I played in the competition for three years, three years, I think, we've done well in, like, each three years, so it was, it was a good experience. Yeah, no, good, um, yeah, so... In terms of that as well, maybe talk a little bit about um, throughout your time at Tottenham, I don't think you, because everyone knows that we all have those great moments. You spoke about being there for so long and um, getting a scholarship and like, we know Nabdi and Nabdi's story was a little bit different. So at Tottenham, did you have any bumps in the roads that you thought, like, that you, you didn't know how to handle maybe or that you just thought, Maybe I, I won't get my next deal. Well, did you have anything that kind of um, had that effect on you? You know what? Like I always, I always believe in myself. Like I know, like there's a difference between having confidence and being overconfident. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I yeah, always yeah. believe in myself. But I think towards the end, um, I just knew it want it want the place for me. But like, when I was young, I always said I want to be a professional footballer. I didn't always say I wanted to be like for it to be at Spurs or Arsenal. Yeah. That's a dream, yeah. But at the same time, I started to follow my dream and I wanted to be a professional footballer. So I think the last two years of my like, at Tottenham, I thought off on the pitch was bad for me, man. Like yeah. I wasn't playing well. Um, I didn't get called up for England anymore. Like, yeah, I was about. I was gonna touch on that as well. To be fair, so. In terms of that, obviously you got quite a lot of England call ups from sixteen to nineteen. Not a lot, but in terms of you, you got called out for for all the age groups. So, yeah. how was that feeling of playing for England and going to represent your country? And do you know, what I mean, playing on the oh, biggest stage. Like it's crazy, man. It's it's crazy. Like especially when you play away and like you got your parents there. It's, just, it's a mad feeling. It's crazy that like, especially we went to the Euros. I think we yeah. We lost to Spain in the quarterfinals, and even that—that that was at the same time. I'm doing all right for Tottenham, so um, I think Ryan Session gets called up as well. So I played like the first game, and then after that, just benched. And that bench coming on, yeah, but got benched. So it was a humbling experience for me, really, because going to the Euros, like. I had the feeling that, yeah, I'm going to get my minutes in. You know, I could, like, show my, myself to the world. But at the same time, I didn't, it didn't go as I really wanted it to. It was really yeah. No, definitely. But like I said, props to you, bro, because not, not many people can say that they've represented their country. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's still a very big look. And like, like we say, there's always the future. you just got to keep working hard. Yeah, for real. Uh, but yeah, in terms of all right, you're you're coming to the end of Tottenham now. So, in terms of that, uh, maybe talk us through the the process of why you decided it was time to go and why Huddersfield. Why was that the right club at the time? So at first, I think I had two bad years to be fair, but my last year was a good year. So, I and and, that... and to be fair as well, the reason I say it is because. 
obviously you was like you said 18 just turning 19 mm. but in terms of that you're still quite young to say I want to go out and play first team football and I want to go out and play first team football and I want to go out and experience it so do you know what I mean like why 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 was that the right time for you um I just me myself personally I felt like it was the right time for me like maybe like coaches and other players didn't but I felt like it was the right time for me and sometimes I'm right sometimes I'm wrong so I left Spurs I'm going to touch on it all later but I left Spurs went to Huddersfield I went straight on loan and I didn't play yeah. a minute I didn't play a minute so at the same time what I thought might have been wrong but it just made me hungry and it made me very like, it just made me mad hungry yeah crazy so yeah alright you decide that you're going to leave Spurs and like you said, you went to Huddersfield now. Um, yeah. In terms of that, you said you went straight back um, out on loan. Yeah. In terms of that loan move, yes, like you just said, you didn't uh, maybe play any minutes, but what, what did that experience do for you and what did it make you or develop you as a player? Because obviously, it's, it's big to go out on loan, even even that like stuff like not having mum and dad there, not having food cooked for you, being at home by yourself. It's, it's a lot to to handle and take in so yeah tell us about that um it's a great club and the exile that i give them more respect but i say those three months were probably the hardest three months of my career as in not playing feeling that you should play then you're far away from your friends family but at the same time i've just come from tottenham so i've just come from a nice training ground nice changing rooms like, basically, the footballer's life, like, everything's sweet for you at Tottenham. Like, yeah. inside the training on pitches, and I've gone to Exxon, it just humbled me a bit more. Like, even going from training on to Astro because the grass ain't good enough, and, like, sometimes jumping in the minibus, and, like, it's, it humbled me a lot, making my own pre-match and stuff like that. So, it made me see the other side of the ball, that like, other side of the game, like, it's not all nice, and it's not all glamorous. It's not what everyone thinks it is. To be fair, it's 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 a brutal it's a brutal sport. Yeah, and I realized that. I realized that on loan, and yeah, just like as I said, it humbled me so much that if you ask my friends or my boys that me, I'm very confident, very confident. Like the in in the way I talk, the way I move, or even on the pitch, but it it humbled me a lot. It didn't not it didn't like not my confidence at all, but it made me see the game. Differently. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. 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 So all right, you you come back from that loan spell and then yeah. you're back at Huddersfield and what what was the thinking? Was it to to maybe go back out on loan or did you think, yeah, cool, I'm gonna stay here and just, just try and get in this first team? Um no. I think I wanted to come back because um a new gaffer came in. Okay. So the new gaffer's come in and I thought like He's given a few chances to like younger players and that in the prem, like obviously because of the situation we were in and stuff like that in the league. So I wanted to come back, but at the same time I I couldn't play because I already played for Tottenham twenty threes and Exeter twenty threes in the FA or something like that. Okay. So I couldn't I couldn't play any competition games for Huddersfield. So obviously I was bugged about that because I felt like I I would have got a chance. But at the same time, I went back and I just had to work hard in front of the manager and just prove him that I'm a, I'm a good player for next season, really. Yeah, so like you said, for the next season, and the next season comes and you, you kind of get your chance. Obviously, yeah. you've played about, I think, how many games do you think you played this year? Like 15 to 20? Yeah, I'd say like all together 23 games. 25. Yeah, so, so in terms of that, obviously... Obviously, what's happened is is kind of shut that down for now. But yeah. that's that's big that you got twenty three games under your belt, and maybe just talk us through that that whole feeling and experience because the championship's not an easy level to go and play in, especially in England. You know what I mean? How yeah. physical it is, and maybe you could tell us a bit more about that. But yeah, just talk to us about your experience and how how the timing worked out for you. Um, so as I said, like. Last season, I was always preparing myself for this season. Because like, when I have a feeling, I'll be like to my boys, 
even my mum would be like, you know what, I'm I'm getting my chance. That I'm gonna get my chance because of how hungry I am. And especially yes. that coming off the back of my loan, I was hungry, bro. Like you wouldn't I don't think people know I was hungry that now, you know what I, I can I can vouch for you because last summer, like I said, we was we was at goals virtually. Bro, goals back. Yeah. Putting in work and do you know what I mean? So I, I first hand saw what you was doing. So like I said, props to you on that. Yeah, like, I was hungry, so pre seasons come, I thought I've done well. Um like the gaffers give me indications that I'm doing well, like moving to the first team dressing room and like, even little stuff like that that gives you like crazy confidence where you just feel like put me in, I wanna I wanna play, I wanna even though I might I might not be ready but I wanna play and I wanna take my chance and um I played it against Lincoln in a Carver Cup and to be fair, it hit me man. It hit me bro. <laughs> 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 like, like, it hit me still that it was a good game we lost 1-0 but like you know when you as I say like you know when you feel like you're so confident and then boom reality check like you see yeah, the crowds yeah. and you're just like right this is the real this is the real game this is the real game so I felt like that game I didn't really take my chance but I didn't play bad but I didn't take my chance so um, like there's a few games I got put in the stands and stuff like that and then the manager's got sacked now. So Mark Hudson took over for I say about three, four weeks. And then I remember before training, no, like you know normally you do like shape work and stuff like that. Yeah. I remember he's calling out my name. But I'm like, nah, like, he can't be calling out my name, like he can't be. <laughs> like my league debut and I was like, nah, can't be. So he's called out my name and like, everyone's like gassing me up like my way that like Trev, KG, and then throughout the whole like shape work, I'm just thinking about to, like the next day. Yeah, I'm yeah. About, like, I'm like, right, I'm actually starting in the championship. That like, is crazy. So I remember, like, I told my boys the story already. That like, you know, shape work, you're working against mannequins. Yeah, yeah. I was so nervous. I got the ball. I'm misplacing passes. <laughs> I'm hitting the mannequins and stuff. I'm like, raw. Like, I need to, I need to pattern up because this is serious. Like, we ain't won a game yet this season, and like, Reading's a good team. Yeah. So, I remember I did tell my mom because my mom would have just been mad. Like, I just didn't tell my mom, didn't tell anyone. I think I told some of my boys, but I just wanted the next day to come. Yeah, yeah. And the next sleep day, that night must have been, must have got no sleep. No, nah, bro, you know what? I was calm that night, bro. It was the next day in the morning. <laughs> like, you know, pretty much, I, I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to eat. <laughs> like, even I, even, I didn't even want to drink, bro, because I was so nervous. But, <laughs> like, it's mad. I just wanted to step on the pitch. And then, as soon as I stepped on the pitch, like, I just felt like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for this. And, like, we lost the game, but I felt like I, I, I had a good game, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. So now you, you've made your debut. Like we said, you've made uh, 23 or however many appearances this season. Mm. Uh, kind of when you got to Huddersfield, who were the kind of people? Obviously, I know there's a lot of London based boys like KG. Um, who else is up there? Uh, Josh, you got you yourself. Um, Rams. So, Rams. So you've got, you got a couple people to, to kind of settle in with. But was there any other players that? that kind of put their arm around you that was uh, already established in that first team and kind of just guided you? Um, I'd say everyone, really. I think everyone was welcoming. Yeah, everyone was welcoming, but they were hard on me, to be fair. So, that people like um, Hoggy, Jonathan Hogg, he's, he's a top guy off the pitch, but on the pitch, he was hard on me because he just wanted more from me. Yeah, yeah. Every, every session, like, even sometimes in gym and look at me and give me that look that he always wanted more from me but like the dressing room I think we have a good dressing room that like, everyone gets along together and yeah it's just good vibes really even in the situation we're in it's good to be together really and I think that's what we are yeah no definitely um, and yeah maybe talk about I don't think you touched on it but talk about that whole transition of moving from London going to a new city new how, how was that feeling and was you was you put in a digs or did you did you live alone? How was that kind of process? Um, 
No, nah, I got put in a hotel. But it was a bit, it's, it was crazy. As I said, like, I say those three months, like, from leaving Tottenham to going back to Huddersfield was, was like, the worst three months of my life because I was never settled. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I've, I've left Tottenham, I've left home, got put in a hotel, like, two, three days later, I got sent straight back out unknown. And it's just like, all my clothes, all my travel stuff was in my boot and the back of my car. So my car's feeling heavy and stuff like that. Like, it was crazy. And then, like, when I was alone, I kept moving up that apartment and stuff like that. You think that that had a, an effect on, on your loan in terms of just not being able to settle off the pitch, kind of put you on the pitch in, at a disadvantage? I think so, because it's like, I'll be real. It's like I was always complaining about something. Yeah. So when I'm on the pitch, like for me personally, I can't play football well if I'm not enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes I'm just like, oh, I've got to drive 30 minutes when I could be 10 minutes away. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. that, that came into football a bit. And it just probably knocked me off a bit, really. Like I'm just always complaining about something. And for me, I just feel like, you can't do well at football if you're not enjoying it. Like, if you're not enjoying a session, you're not going to play well in the session. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, I had to sort that out within myself, really, and make sure that when I got my recall back to that, like, I'm not, I'm not anyone to be complaining about anything. I'm, I'm not, I'm a nobody, really. So, I just, just put my head down and work hard. No, definitely. And that's, like I said, I've first time witnessed the hard work. So, props, bro. All right, so cool. In terms of that, we're, we're kind of up to date with where you're at now. Um, yeah. What's kind of, or what was what was the plan going forward for the rest of the season? For you personally, what was like your personal goals to, to finish out this season? You know what, before this season started, as I said that, like, when I speak to my boys, I speak to my mum, I, I believe in myself a lot. Mm. So before this season started, like some people saying, oh, it's rash. It's a rash call, but my actual goal was to make like 15 appearances so I've done that already made about 18 starts so that was my goal I thought it would come but I didn't know it would come this soon to be fair yeah no definitely but the work's been been done yeah. uh, so bro let's let's maybe open it up a bit so for the people that are at home that are watching like the younger viewers and stuff like that maybe uh, give some words of advice on on because obviously there's young footballers that are on the, the same journey that we was on. Some are, some are that age of getting scholars, might get rejected at one club. What would your advice be to, to these young boys that are in and around this that age of? Um, I just say like, football's a game of opinions, you know? Like, you may, you may think one player is good, I may, I may not think the same thing. So, I just think that you always got to believe in yourself. And never... Never do the excuse game because that won't get you far. Like, yeah, the coaches are shagging me or this and that. That won't get you far. As I said, like, when I knew I was on my last years at Tottenham, that season I went in the hardest. Like, I've done extras. I've played the hardest because I knew there's all there's always going to be clubs out there that will want you, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a good player, yeah, if you're not wanted somewhere, it's like a nice girl, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you don't treat your girl right, someone else is gonna treat her right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I always thought that I just gotta be ready for whoever's gonna come in for me. Really. Yeah. To be fair, I say I say that to quite a lot of uh, the young players. I always tell them like every game you play, like even if it's grassroots, district, academy, you're always in the shop window. So yeah, exactly. That game you play, yeah. In the end. The club that you're currently at might not want you, but the club you go to, that could have been the game that made them want to sign you. So yeah. you have to always just be giving a hundred percent and putting that work in. Oh, right. just, think, just do your own thing, really. Never watch next man and say like, "Oh, like, I'm as good as him, so I should be," you know, making as many appearances in, as him or with the first team. Because the game don't run like that. It don't work like that. Yeah. So, just focus on yourself, like, do your own thing, and trust me, that like, you work hard, you will get you will get what you like, you work for, really. Yeah, no, definitely, bro. All right, cool. So, I've got I just got a couple questions 
mm. to kind of wrap it up and make it sweet. So in terms of when you was growing up, who was your kind of idols, the people that you looked up to in terms of, it could be football, it could be off the pitch, but who were your role models? My role models? Uh, I just got to be my mum. My mum, my uncle, they were my real role, role models, man. Because, like, my mum see me where I just want to give up on ball. Like, can't be asked. And my mum's always had the picture for me. She's 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 known that, like, I've got the talent. So I will give it to my mum, my uncle for driving me from north to south, south to north. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, man. They're my role models, role models still. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's big. Um, like a lot of people don't understand that parents have a big impact on your on your football in terms Not of. Too, bro. From young, imagine your mom and uncle, like you said, didn't take you all the way to to Spurs every week to train and to play. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't be there. Do you know what I mean? So they definitely they definitely deserve the the praise that you give them. Yeah, and like, my mum's like just finishing work, pick me up from the school, boom, on the M way, traffic. Then she's got to sit in the car till what, eight thirty nine. Dinner's not even cooked. Bro, Dinner's that's what I'm saying. Cooked. Sometimes I got my mum's got to call my nan and be like, "Look, like, is there any food? Because it's it's crazy. Like that's that's how it is. That's how I've grown up. So even now the situation I'm, I'm in, I'll never take anything for granted or think this and that. I'm I'm always the same guy. So because my mum's my mum's taught me a lot. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. That's big, bro. But yeah, with with the whole with the whole role models, did you have any uh football footballing role models that when you were growing up you was like, Yeah, that's that's the guy I'm trying to I'm trying to take bits off, I'm trying to emulate. Uh no, nah, not really, I'll be real. Nah, no, nah, not really. I think even now, I think more now than I was younger, to be fair. Because when I was younger I just enjoyed Just play to play in it. Well yeah, you don't really now. I look at people like Marcelo. I love Marcelo, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. People may say like, "Oh, like, bro, you're 21. like." But I, I try to do everything Marcelo does. Like, even sometimes, like looking the same at him, as him in training or like, like wearing yeah, hats yeah. and stuff like that. Because I love Marcelo. I always before every game, I've seen his clips about 100 times. I will watch his clips. So like, if I'm traveling, I will watch the same clips. Like, I love him. No, that's sick, man. Right? Also, I, I, I want to ask this question. In terms of, like, like we said earlier, you had that transition of playing up front, going to left back. Do you ever feel like maybe later on that you'll you'll start to progress back up the pitch again and maybe start to play left wing again or, or maybe in, a, in the centre of the park? Um, or do you feel that left back's the position for you and you want to just focus and kick on from there? I'll be real. Um, like, Every, obviously, that like, people know how I play, I'm very attacking. But I can defend as well. Like, defending comes first, but I'm, I'm very attacking. So, like, every last time I end up, look, <laughs> I see what I <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the you know what I ask you, yeah? Because whenever we kick ball, yeah, you're, the technique, you know, like, from young, the, the players that don't really have the technique, and they're, yeah. they're usually the guys that play at the yeah. back. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So no, me knowing you, you're you got the text. So I'm like, is he a little? Ask the man them. Man. They, they, <laughs> the man they want me to play out high up the pitch, but you know what? Like if the gap is cool, you got you got to do what you got to do. But I think personally, like I, of course I love playing on the wing, but yeah, man, I feel like I never know, bro. I hope so, because I do enjoy attacking. So I hope I could play a bit high up the pitch, but. For now, I'm easy, man. I like my position. So. Yeah, no, that's big, bro. And yeah, so in terms of football, when it's all said and done, in terms of you're retired, what do you want people to, to say or what do you want to <laughs> have, have achieved in the game? Um, firstly, just that, how I am as a person, you know, like for people to say like, yeah, he's a good guy, a good chap. And also just, just to be known for what, what I'm good at. Oh yeah, do you know about like myth, myth to play against? Like, don't yeah. stop running or like, it's just a myth. But really and truly, I play for my own success. I play for my family. So, like for me, my goal is to get appearances, 
I make sure my family sorted out. So I'm not really that bothered about what anyone like, after my career is done. I'm not really bothered. So just want my family sorted out. To be fair. Yeah, no, that's big because, like, I speak to a lot of people, and I know uh, the, there's people out there that after games, like, they're on Twitter looking at what people got to say, and mm-hmm. like, it, it, it's a it, obviously you don't you don't want to be that person that cares about what other people think. So I think that's a that's a big thing for you to to know what you want and to know that I'm doing it for my family. I'm not doing you it for. I think that's the wrong thing to do because. You know, like for me, I've also learned never get too high, never get too low, innit? At one stage, a few months ago, I'm I'm playing, doing my thing, that like, name's buzzing, then boom, get an injury, then it's like, it feels like you're forgotten about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you come back from injury, like, you're not as sharp as you are, then you have an average game or a bad game, you check Twitter, and you're like, you're like, raw. <laughs> Like, this is what what people think now. But I just think, like, never get too high in a game and never get too low because if you get too high, you're going to get crushed down, you know what I'm saying? And if you get, if you're too low, you're just going to struggle. But as as I said, it's a brutal sport. So, yeah, like, definitely, I think, like, people need to understand at the end of the day, everyone's human. Everyone's entitled to errors and mistakes. And you you can't always be 100%. So, especially, I always think it's, it's easy to go and do it when you're playing in a park, with no pressure. But I, I think that that pressure of being in a stadium, having people around you, is definitely a big factor in in the in the performance. So, no, nah, that's that's big, bro. And I think yeah, I think it motivates me more. It don't, it don't, it motivates me more. But the Twitter thing and that you know our fans can be sometimes that like us. We got great fans. But yeah. sometimes you you know you know football like everyone knows the game. Some fans could love you, then hate you in within seconds. So just play your game and don't don't look on Twitter because that's not important. That like, that's not what makes me happy. You know what I'm saying? Like I look on Twitter and someone says, "Oh yeah, Jaden's hard," or he's absolutely pants. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I'm not bothered either way. So just play your game. Opinion, right? like we said earlier, football's football's opinion. So yeah. What someone else's opinion, the next person is not going to think the same. So exactly, exactly. Uh, definitely. And bro, last one from me. In terms of this whole uh, COVID stuff, what have you personally been doing to keep fit? You've been on the five Ks. Yeah, ish. You know, like you say, yeah. sub twenty. Nah, not too much running because like I'm just coming from injury, my ankle and stuff like that. But okay, I've been, okay. more I've rehab been stuff. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of like indoor back sessions. Uh, a few core sessions but the club's giving me a schedule so hopefully when I'm back to ball I'm fit and I'm ready man because it's going to come thick and fast to be real yeah no definitely bro and listen Jay thank you like I said for I appreciate you taking your time out to come and speak and come and tell a bit of your journey and do you know what I mean there's, like I said there's there's going to be young players watching this that, that can take a little bit of motivation a little bit of inspiration away from it so Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Um, And yeah, so everyone, thank you a lot for tuning in. Uh, Obviously, tomorrow we've got Jamie Maskell from Wickham Wanderers coming on. uh, And I think he's got a great story. Uh, I'll leave that to him tomorrow to to tell. But yeah, thank you all for coming on. Appreciate it. And yeah, we move. So tomorrow we're back. We move, we move, we move. Thank you, bro.